Good morning. Um, I, what I'm going to talk about today is our efforts to um, enhance our research uh, by incorporating data from uh, the periodontal microbiome. So we all know that we're in, in personalized medicine. We take into account, of course, uh, genetics and, and also environmental uh, exposure. Um, the microbiome is, is one of the most important um, environmental exposures that we have. And um, the, uh, the oral microbiome, the periodontal microbiome, uh, is, is, is known to be rather important in many of the diseases that we're interested in. Um, so we're, we're building on um, our previous work in, in uh, the Personalized Medicine Research Project, which is a population-based uh, biobank that we have that has over 20,000 uh, uh, subjects in it. Uh, for each of these subjects, we have DNA, plasma, and serum samples, um, access to uh, electronic uh, medical records um, that the Marshfield Clinic has, has pioneered, and, and these medical records go back an average of 30 years. We also have the ability to recontact our subjects, and um, this is, we also have uh, various uh, advisory boards, including a community advisory group, uh, ethics and security, and also scientific advisory board. And uh, I'd like to add that uh, in terms of institutional support, um, this was all done with uh, Marshfield Clinic funds, uh, which were uh, literally millions of dollars to set this up. And this, uh, this population uh, has been instrumental in many of the studies, um, for example, through uh, the eMERGE network. So a lot of our studies are funded through, through eMERGE. Um, we'd like to, as I said, we'd like to add to its utility um, and in, in doing that, uh, we're creating this oral and systemic health uh, research project. So we really would like to understand the connections between uh, oral and systemic health. Um, it, it's, uh, it's interesting that um, uh, among many uh, of our, of our uh, medical colleagues, uh, that the mouth is not even considered part of the body, so uh, we, we think it is. <laughs> And um, we think the microbiome is very important. Um, there's there's uh, tremendous evidence now uh, out there uh, of a mutual enhancement of uh, periodontal disease and diabetes. So that is, if you have diabetes, you're more at risk for periodontal disease. And if you have periodontal disease, you're, you're at higher risk uh, for diabetes. Other common diseases linked to periodontal disease include heart disease, uh, hypertension, osteoporosis, um, and each of these has uh, genetic uh, and environmental, other environmental risk factors. So understanding, uh, also understanding the causes of oral diseases are important. Uh, what are the genetics of periodontal disease and, and dental caries? Um, what are the effects of, of genetics in, in these particular uh, disorders? Uh, and, and also if we take into account diet, uh, water source, and of course this microbiome. Um, so <clears throat> we're out to, our goal is to understand um, really how improving or oral health will aid in um, systemic health, um, and that could be through comparative effectiveness, and to bring um, a personalized health care to the dental arena. So um, the, the Marshfield Clinic has opened up uh, seven dental centers, two more are planned. Uh, we provide uh, dental services to, to all counties uh, in Wisconsin. We employ uh, 39 uh, full-time uh, dentists, and uh, in 2010 saw over 30,000 unique dental patients, and then uh, this year saw an additional 40,000 uh, unique dental patients. Um, it, we, in our virtual data warehouse, uh, we have uh, uh, currently 100 and about 190,000 uh, medical patients and then the 70,000 dental patients. Um, in the past year, uh, both, seen both by our medical facility and our dental facilities, we have 26,000 um, uh, patients. And uh, in this past year, 72% of our dental patients are also uh, our medical patients. Um, just as we've pioneered um, electronic uh, health records, 
Um, uh, we've also done the same for electronic uh, dental health records and combining uh, these two records uh, together. So we're among the first in the nation to implement an integrated medical, uh, dental, electronic health record environment. So in creating this uh, research resource, um, we will, have, we will uh, uh, re recruit additional patients um, and actually some of those, some of our dental patients are already in our personalized medicine research um, project. But we intend to recruit an additional 2,000 patients on top of those that are uh, in both. Um, and this will, in these patients, we will have, just as we do with PMRP, uh, DNA, plasma, and serum, uh, plus a, a standard uh, periodic test for fasting glucose, uh, hemoglobin A1C, a serum microalbumin, uh, and also we will be taking samples um, of oral bacteria, uh, including the periodontal uh, microbiome. And um, these individuals will also uh, answer um, a detailed questionnaire on their environment and diet, et cetera. Um, and so we're, we're building uh, on previous work that we've done with our personalized medicine uh, research project. And um, currently, um, we have uh, about 1,500 individuals who are uh, uh, both dental and patients and also in PMRP. And again, we're going to be recruiting um, two uh, additional, uh, 2,000 additional subjects. Um, we also have pilot projects uh, going that are funded by the Marshfield Clinic. Uh, two of those are on, in, in, on diabetes. And uh, we've received uh, uh, significant funding uh, from Delta Dental uh, to help in this recruitment and build this cohort. So um, like um, the other uh, medical centers uh, represented here, uh, diabetes is, is one of uh, the larger problems that um, our population faces. Um, the, it, it, in, over, uh, in our over uh, 65 age group in Wisconsin, uh, about 19% uh, are diabetic. Um, and among all uh, ages adults, uh, about 10% uh, diabetic. So um, in, in, um, in, in, in uh, 47,000 unique patients in which we've had both dental and medical data within our integrated uh, medical dental enterprise data warehouse, um, we have about 9,000 moderate to severe periodontal diseases and uh, about 2,700 diabetic patients. Um, and uh, we have about 1,900 diabetics who have had a, a dental visit within the past year, but uh, almost uh, 900 have not had a dental visit. Um, in one of our centers, the Chippewa Falls Center, um, these are the kinds of data that we have currently, uh, including um, tests for hemoglobin A1C, cholesterol, uh, fasting glucose, et cetera. So uh, we have, among these dental patients, uh, we have in just the one center, we have about 800 people who uh, we, could, um, uh, we could get data from. What we'd like to do among the, the lowest of the low-hanging fruits without even um, considering um, uh, genetic information is to uh, have alerts uh, for people who have, um, say, periodontal disease to be screened for diabetes and vice versa. Um, so this resource will, will combine uh, our electronic uh, medical record data with electronic dental record data, with genomic data, um, and other biofluids, blood, and serum samples, as well as uh, oral uh, microbiome samples. Um, and we hope that this will uh, enable us to, to better understand the contribution of, uh, of uh, oral bacteria to diseases. And I'd like to refer you to uh, a really great review that um, uh, Jeff Ginsburg uh, and colleagues have just published in Oral Diseases, and I've uh, reconstructed one of their figures here. Um, 
that just uh, uh, el illustrates how the oral microbiome uh, can play a role in, in various uh, diseases. So, um, and in, in answer to Terry's question, um, uh, I've kind of, I've made some notes as to uh, uh, some of my colleagues here, what kinds of things that you have available. And um, just as we've done with PMRP, uh, we are very open to, uh, to collaborations and, and, and setting up uh, 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 joint uh, research projects um, in this area. So uh, I look forward to discussing that with you uh, later on today. So be happy to answer any questions that you have. Great. Comments from Murray? So Murray, in your uh, background, you noted the importance of environment. And in the slide that you, where you're talking about data collection, um, there wasn't anything that specifically mentioned environmental factors. Uh, I know that you do collect environmental factors for the personalized medicine program. So uh, the two questions I have is, uh, what is your intent in terms of collecting environmental risk factors that may impact uh, some of your hypotheses uh, for this program? And the second question is, it seems that if, in fact, there uh, are some specific environmental factors, that this would be a, a, a nice target for uh, the collaboration aspect of it, presuming uh, that uh, uh, the cheese level uh, in other collaborators may not be quite as high as uh, Marshfield, Wisconsin, uh, or some other environmental factors to be named later. So could you comment a bit on that? Uh, well, uh, yeah, so um, I, I like the part about the cheese. Um, <laughs> So, so uh, yeah, we, we uh, will be collecting the same uh, environmental uh, questionnaire data as we do uh, for PMRP. The, these, uh, these individuals, these subjects will be uh, within PMRP. So all the data that we have on PMRP individuals will also be collected on, on these new individuals as well. Um, and uh, we've also been working uh, through the, the FENEX uh, col collaborative to standardize a lot of these uh, environmental uh, effects such as smoking and alcohol consumption and, and things like that. In addition, um, uh, we're um, gathering a lot of data in particular about uh, water sources and fluoridation and things like that in terms of, uh, of this cohort. Um, and uh, also um, uh, various aspects of animal exposure and things like that that, that may mark our population uh, differently than other populations. Um, yes, Pearl. Uh, are you looking at the microgene? Yeah. Are you looking over time, or is it a single snapshot of the um, microbiome? Right. Thank you. It, it, um, we're going to be looking over time. Uh, so our dental patients, uh, what we're what we're um, uh, focusing on are, are kind of naive dental patients, patients that um, uh, because of uh, economics in our state and other places are underserved. So uh, Wisconsin, like uh, er all other places, um, we have a large population of rural poor um, who are, are not served uh, currently for dental uh, care. So we can actually, uh, uh, as uh, these patients book um, at our dental clinics, we can see, okay, they haven't seen a dentist in two, three years, something like this. They, they are also, uh, we also capture um, their, uh, their health records, their patients at the Marshfield Clinic uh, Medical Center as well. Um, so we're gonna focus on those naive patients first um, and uh, collect uh, periodontal and other uh, microbiome uh, uh, specimens uh, at their initial visit and then at follow-up visits every six months. So uh, included in that are, are really some of the, the standard tests for diabetes that I've talked about, hemoglobin A1C, microalbumin, fasting glucose, and we'll have that periodically at six-month intervals. And that, that will be important in, in, in looking at, at effectiveness of of you know, having good dental care, how is that going to affect um, their diabetic status? How are you going to characterize the microbiome? Um, th uh, so we're gonna be uh, taking samples from four different places in, in the mouth, um, saliva 
and then also uh, more aerobic surfaces, um, and then anaerobic surfaces, and then uh, specimens that are associated with periodontal disease. And then these will be subject to 16S uh, sequencing uh, to characterize the, the, the community. So you may, you may be aware of the whole genome sequencing that's all, already been done on the dental, yes. and, and that yes. certainly gives you a lot more information. Yes. Thanks.